Bolos or bread and butter, what should you be looking out for when you're selling on eBay or any other platform? My name's Ian, I sell books on eBay, so this is going to really be about books, but could relate to lots of different things. So bolos and bread and butter. A bolo, be on the lookout for something that's a bit unusual, a bit rare, that is going to be worth a lot more than a bread and butter item, which is something that you can find all the time and will make you small profits. So quantity versus quality, etc. What I want to do is take us out of that thrift op charity shop setting or the car boot sale or wherever else you go. And let's pretend we're in the supermarket. So you're in the supermarket and you go to the discounted shelf, you know, the, the stuff that's out of date today. And that's where you're going to get your dinner from every single day. Now, in the dream world, <clears throat> excuse me, every single day, you're going to go in and you're going to pick up a nice bit of fillet steak, super cheap, a nice bit of chocolate cake for your pudding. And that's what you will eat every day. However, if you go into the shop every single day, you will not find a bit of steak and a bit of chocolate cake every single day. That's the dream, but you won't find them every single day. If there's been some of those cheap luxury items put out, they were maybe put out 10 minutes before you arrived and somebody grabbed them before you got there. Um, they might be getting put out as you arrive and you will get them. There might have been quite a few put out in any single day, so there'll be one left when you get there, but it's not guaranteed. So if you say, right, all I am going to eat is steak and chocolate cake, when it's on that reduced price, at some point you're going to go hungry. Probably more often than not, you're going to go hungry. But if you also say, right, if I can't get steak and chocolate cake, I'm going to grab a loaf of bread. Every single time you go into the supermarket on that reduced aisle shelf, there will be a half price, something similar, loaf of bread. So if you always pick up a loaf of bread, you're never going to go hungry. That becomes your staple. You can also look at the cold food section and maybe there'll be a bit of steak and chocolate cake as well. So you can have your loaf of bread and you can have your steak and chocolate cake and that'll be fantastic. But every single time you go in, if you don't want to starve, you need to pick up that loaf of bread. If you've got 10 supermarkets in your local area and you go into all 10 of them, you can get 10 loaves of bread. You can get probably 100 loaves of bread at a good price that will keep you fed for weeks and weeks and weeks. But you might not find one single bit of steak or one single bit of chocolate cake. So let's transpose that to the thrift shop, the op shop, the charity shop. The bolos are your steak and cake, obviously. So if you've got, you know, five, six, ten uh, shops in your local area that you can get to quite easily, if you go into all of them, you might, you might find a bit of steak or a bit of cake, or maybe even both. You might find a couple of bits of steak, you might find a huge chocolate cake. You might find those things. But every single shop you go into, you will find a loaf of bread. So it's knowing what those loaves of bread are and what they are going to be worth to you picking them up and reselling them that steak you might get it for you know 25p and be able to sell it for 200 pounds that bread and butter you know the bread and butter the staple that loaf of bread that you pick up you will definitely be able to find one but you might only make a pound you might only make 50p but that's the difference in the two so always been a lookout for you know the bolos the steak and the cake but consistently pick up the staples, the loaves of bread, the bread and butter items that will continuously bring in money into your eBay business. It might not be huge money and you just need to work out whether or not it is worth the effort for the time and space you have. Anyway, that's what this is all going to be about. I have looked at uh, all my various stats and information from the last three months. So let's pull that all up onto the screen, have a look at it and you can decide whether or not it's worth your while sticking to the steak and cake or whether you want to grab a few loaves of bread when you're out and about as well. So eBay provides a lot of data. Um, you can ignore it or you can use it. If you want to improve your sales, improve what you're able to do, then you need to use it. So if you go into your sold metrics, 
so performance, sales. Um, scroll down, you probably all know this, but you scroll down, you will find data such as this. So at the moment, this is just a quick look at my last 31 days sales. So you can see that for Julia Donaldson, for example, I've sold 54, total sales were 146, selling costs were 89, so I've made about 56 pounds off of Julia Donaldson sales. I buy all my postage through eBay, so therefore the total selling cost is postage cost plus all of my listing fees that have, and promotion fees that have gone against that. So you have a look at that type of data and it will show you something of what you need. Now also, if you go to performance and traffic, it gives you further metrics such as the number that you've got currently available, the total quantity sold, and their own sales conversion rates and the metrics they've got in there. Also shows you know the number of impressions it's take, taken to get that uh, number of clicks, to get that number of sales, etc. But that's the, the basis of where I've taken all of my data from to show you what we can see next, which is this. Let's go and have a look at this one first. So what I have done here is taken over the last 90 days, so not just over the last 31 days, but I've taken it over the last three months, which is probably closer to 100 days, to be honest. Over 100 days, how many of all of these individual bits and pieces I have sold? I'm just going to move me out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got it by author. We've got the total available across that period, so that's the number sold plus the number still available, which has given me a sell-through rate on that. I know what my total sales value was, I know what my total eBay costs were, and uh, able to work out what the stock cost me to buy, so I then know what my net sales are off the back of that. At the end, I've come up with a wee score, which is essentially sell-through times net sales, just as a guide so that I can see how that compares to a few other ways at looking at these metrics. Now, a few qualifiers before we go any further. First up, my unit cost is typically about 25 pence a book, 25 pence, to, pence a unit. And I know not everybody can get them for that price. Some people might get them cheaper. Some people are going to pay more. So when we go through this, I'll show you how this works out, whether you've paid 25 pence, three for a pound, 50 pence each, or a pound each, so you can see just exactly how this could work for you as you go through it all. Um, as an example, if we were to quickly change that and you were paying one pound a book, you can see that Stephen King's net sales have suddenly dropped to 66 pounds. The scores have changed. Julia Donaldson would have cost you 20 pounds based on the rest of the metrics there. So for looking at this, I'm going to keep it at what my unit cost is so we can see how that all works. Another qualifier, Stephen King, for example. I have sold more than 66 Stephen King books in that period, but a handful of the books I've sold have been those bows, uh, first editions, something a bit special, ones that are more valuable and you don't see very often. When I list them, they go up as individual listings more often than not and will sell separately from this. So these numbers all relate to the bread and butter stock I get from these books. So Stephen King, it's the bread and butter Stephen King. It's the ones where I pick them up for a few pence and I sell them for a few quid. It doesn't include, you know, £25 for a first edition BCA Firestarter or whatever it might be, those are not included in this metric. Although you do find them, they're not common and these are all common books that you will find regularly. I hope that makes sense. Third qualifier or disclaimer even, this is purely based on my data. It will vary for everyone. Um, I've spoken before about listings getting momentum so a lot, of, a lot of these listings have been up for, you know, six months plus, which means that they've had a few months to gather momentum before reaching these sales rates. So if you put 
a Lee Child listing up, for example, it might take a couple of months for it to gather momentum, for it to get a few sales, and for the eBay algorithm to like it, recognize it, and start generating sales through. So it will vary for everybody on that basis, but this is based on my data, where they've all had at least three months as established listings, some less, some slightly more, and then three months worth of sales from that point onwards. So the sales period here at your head is from the 1st of November up to yesterday, the 9th of February. Now, that includes the Christmas period where sales are inflated compared to the rest of the year. However, what I found with these types of sales, these types of listings, there wasn't much of a spike over the Christmas period. You know, from looking at the start of November and through the end of January, there wasn't a spike across that Christmas sales point on these types of listings. I did have sales spikes for other typically individual book listings, but these have stayed fairly consistent across the piece. There's days up and there's days down, but fairly consistent across the piece. So the, the, the Christmas sales haven't massively influenced, I don't think, from what I've looked at, the numbers and the values that we have here. Right, enough of that. What is the point of this? What is the point of me showing you all of this? Well, as I said at the outset, there are bolos. Be on the lookout for. If you find, for example, a book I sold a few days ago, Brandon Sanderson, first edition hardcover from 2010 or 2011, and it sold for £250. Right, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's fantastic. But absolutely delighted with that. But it's not going to happen every day. You're not going to go out every single day and find that type of item. Uh, you may see them and not even know what they are and ignore them. You may just be obliv oblivious. You, you don't know until you know. Um, but you won't find bolos like that every single day. So you need to know what you can find every single time you go out sourcing. Uh, and what is the right price to pay for those particular items so that you can actually make a little bit of money off the top of it. So having a quick run through this list just to explain where we're at and where we're starting looking at this. Uh, 50 authors, so Stephen King, Lee Child, Julia Donaldson, Michael Conley, Clive Custler, Terry Pratchett, Stuart McBride, John Grisham. They're all authors that you would expect to be on here if you've watched any of my videos and you've seen any of my sales. Um, when you go through the list in any kind of detail, you notice a lot of them are thriller, adventure, horror. Uh, not too many fantasy in there. Well, we've got Terry up near the top. Uh, quite a few kids' books, Roald Dahl, Les Bichon, uh, a few more down there, and women's fiction. So we've got Marion Keys, we've got Dilly Court, we also have got down here, well, Lisa Jewell's not so much in that bracket anymore, but Nadine Doris certainly is. Yeah, you can see that it is a pretty good mix of that. It's crime and thriller, a couple of horrors, a few women's fiction, a few kids' books, and really not much out with that, but to be honest, that's covering nearly every genre going, isn't it? So that takes us all the way down to everything we have in our top, what's that, top 70 is the total on that list. So a lot of books, uh, yeah, a lot of different titles sold, and a lot of variables to consider when working out what you should or should not pick up. So let's go across the top row here for Stephen King just to explain exactly what this all means, just to keep it nice and clear. So for Stephen King, in the last 100 days, I've had a total of 86 books that I've either currently got in stock or have sold. Of those 86, 66 have sold in that 100 day period, which gives me a sale through rate of 76.74%. Now eBay tells me that the total sales value for those 66 books was £264.21 and that they took for 
my postage and their fees, £111.88. and pence. Now, I also know that 86 books at 25 pence each cost me £21.50, which means that the net sales are £130.83. and pence. And yes, I know there are other costs to come off of that before you can put any money in your pocket, depending on how your business is set up, etc. There's packaging costs to come off of that, which would be, you know, amount to a couple of pounds. With your put, you know, if you're just a sole trader, then you've got to pay your tax and your national insurance and all of these things off of that amount as well. So all of that is to be deducted. I don't operate as a sole trader, so this is net net sales where the profit is going into the business. Although obviously I do have other business expenses that would be deducted from my total income within a month or a week, however you want to look at it. The score, as I said before, is just the net sales multiplied by the sale through rate to give me a guide score as to how valuable a particular author is when I see them and who I should pick up the most often. And there's no real great surprises in here for me. That top 10, Stephen King, Lee Child, Julia Donaldson, Michael Conley, Clive Costler, Terry Pratchett, Stuart McBride, John Grisham, David Baldacci, Wilbur Smith. I would all expect them to be up there in the top 10, top 15. Um, and then when you look below that, a few other favourites that I know do well. We've got David Williams, Harlan Coben, Peter May. They're all in there. They all sell well. I know that for a fact. There are some exceptions in here where I would expect these authors to score a lot higher. So Colleen Hoover is a really good example. Um, I've had 25 of her books in total and 22 of them have sold. So I only started picking up Colleen Hoover just before Christmas. So it's quite a new listing. Um, if I had picked up 100 of those books, would I have sold 88? I don't know, but I would expect that the sell through, you know, the overall score would be a lot higher because the total net sales would be a lot higher. So there are other considerations within this, um, but I've run through a few variations on how this all works out just to show you what the difference would be if you considered something other than my top score. Right. Of course, if anyone's got any questions about any of this, please throw them in the, the comments and we'll see if we can go back to them at a future date. However, let's, let's run this in a few different ways. So we've got my score at the top, which tells us you know, the net sales versus the sell through rate. So what, what would I consider a top score? But let's have a look at what happens if we change it to the total number of books available. So we've got John Grisham. I've had the most John Grisham books available. I've sold 70 of them, which is a 50% sell through rate, which is still quite good. Uh, and my net sales in that have been £58.93. So it's a much lower score than Stephen King's 100. But it still made me 60 quid in money. And John Grisham is very easy to pick up and find. Hope that makes sense. Uh, David Williams, another author who I've had a lot of books of. And if it's a less than 50% sell-through rate, but I've still made 50 quid. Then you go to Danielle Steele, which takes us to the complete other end of the spectrum. Uh, I've got 131 of hers in total. I've only sold 21 in the last three months, which is low for her, to be honest. Um, but it has resulted in only £10.84 in profit for having those 131 books stacked up, stocked up. So that's one where you would consider only picking up if you have huge amounts of space to store them. Julia Donaldson comes flying out the gates and looks really good from this perspective. So I've managed to get 119. I've sold 94, which is a really good sell through rate and has resulted in £70 total profit uh, for those sales. Now, Another way to look at it when you're looking at it from the the net sales versus 
total sold perspective would be, if we're looking at John Grisham, 70 books to make 60 quid. So that's a bit less than a pound. Whereas David Williams, 54 books to make 53 pounds. So that's almost on the pound a book. Danielle, again, you're only making 50 pence a book. Julia, 94 for 70. So you're down at 75 pence, 80 pence a book. You're making a net profit for each of those. And that's assuming you're picking them up for 25p. Right, I hope that makes sense. Let's look at it from a sell-through point of view. So if you were go to go to the authors who have the best sell-through rate, then up at the top would be Anne McCaffrey, so fantasy, sci-fi. I've had 22 of her books in total, and I've sold 20. Um, I have got a few of hers listed as individual listings, so there are some exceptions out with this rule for that, but for the bread and butter Anne McCaffrey books, 22 for 20. Now, I don't know if that's an author that people would normally look at, but those 20 books made me £21, so that's more than a pound per book that's, you know, gone out there. But it only gets a score on my scale of 19.57 because the net sales have been low, but that's because I've not had many available. Lee Child, on the other hand, I've had 80 of them, sold 71, and they've made me a net sales of 89.49, which is again well over a pound per book for selling those. So Lee Child, definitely up there for picking up and looking at. There's Colleen, when we look at it from the sell through rate, so these were the, it pulls through differently. 25, 22 of them sold, but only making me 18 pounds. So a, a bit below the, the one pound mark, which is always nice. And then this identifies a bit of an exception in Gerald Seymour here. So I've had 23, I've sold 20, but it's only made me £8.34. So that's a listing where these books have not gone out um, in big bundles. Well, actually, it was one big bundle and then a few singles, so not as great as you would like. But in there is always going to be the real bread and butter to look out for. Stephen King, 66 sold for £130 back in. So over £2 per profit book on those if you're picking them up for 25p. Right, the other metric that I would consider looking at these by would be which has made me the most money. So when you do it by that order, the net sales, so the top, 10 books sold there have made £676 profit over three months. So that's a couple of hundred pounds a month in profit. And all you'd need to have done was go out and source 894 books to sell 561. So that's, for most people, that'll be the most appealing metric to look at. So who are the, the top authors that I can pick up and then sell through for a decent rate. Now, what you'll notice about a lot of these is they're the higher numbers. There's Ian Rankin sitting just outside that. But for that top 10, most of them are big numbers. You know, the ones that have really made a lot of money for me. Terry Pratchett's kind of an exception in there because there's a few of his books that are typically worth five, six, seven, eight pounds compared to the usual three or four pounds. Um, but for the most part there, you can see they're all big numbers, so you need to have a lot of them in before you'll start selling a lot of them. If you've only got five of each of these, then the rest of these metrics are going to be very, very different. However, because you can find these nearly every single time you go out, you know, you'll find a mixture of these every time you go out, then you'll quite quickly build up your total availables. Your listings will begin to get a bit of momentum with eBay and you'll start making money off them. Right, so that's how I organized all this data to then summarize and show you this. So, if we were to look at the 25 pence per book unit cost, which I'm hoping some of you are able to achieve when you're out buying things. Um, if we were to look at it from the point of view of my top score and you were only to go out and source 
the top 10 authors on that list, which would be, let's just get that back to that run there. Oops, I've missed one. Let's just put these into a wee separate box so it's nice and easy for everyone to see. So our top 10 authors are that. And if I can get it to scroll, you will see. So those top 10 authors, Stephen King, Lee Child, Julia Donaldson, Michael Connolly, Clive Custler, Terry Pratchett, Stuart McBride, John Grisham, David Baldacci and Wilbur Smith. All in good condition. If you were to focus only on those top 10, over the last three months, you would have spent just over £200 in stock, um, but you would have made £657.46 and in profit less taxes and blah de blah de blah you would have sold 564 books if you put them up as variation listings the average lot going out for me is four books per sale so that would have been 141 sales you would have had to process over three months which would have taken and this is an approximation again just based on what i do that would have been a total of about 23 hours of effort so that's including going out sourcing a few times uh, Packing, picking, posting, all the rest of it, which would give you an hourly rate based off of that of £28.55, which is quite nice. If you look at the top 20, which takes on another... What does it take us up to? It takes us up to... Is that 10? Yes, there's another 10. Let's add these on at the bottom of this list here. there's our top 20. So we have added James Herbert, David Williams, Harlan Coben, Peter May, Anne McCaffrey, Simon Scarrow, Marion Keyes, Roald Dahl, Bernard Cornwell and Colleen Hoover. Uh, they have all been added in there to become our top 20 authors to be on the lookout for, for making bread and butter sales. Uh, so with that top 20, again looking at on my, the basis of my scores, it would have cost you £344. You would have brought in a total net profit before taxes, blah blah blah, of £989. You would have had to process about 872 sale uh, items, which would relate to 218 sales, which is going to take you about 35 36 hours, and your hourly rate would be down slightly to £27.78. So, a slightly lower hourly rate, but if you have the time available, then you've made more money. You know, you've made an extra three hundred and thirty odd pounds for doubling up on the number of authors that you're picking up and going. If you were to take the top fifty, and I'm not going to pull that list through because it's pretty much the entire list, then your total stock would have cost you eight hundred and twenty two pounds across that period. But your total net profit would be fifteen hundred pounds. So five hundred pounds a month for spending about twenty to twenty five hours a month on that effort, uh, which again means total items sold is going to be 16.54 for about 414 sales and about £22.90 per hour would be that working rate. So again, if you've got the time, that's still a fair income. Uh, if you're not doing anything else with that time that's more valuable, then that's what you could generate and you're looking at 20 odd hours a month to achieve an extra £1,500 into your bank account after taxes and any other costs involved. Now, if you were to look at it just by the sell-through rate that I've got on my chart, so this column here, let's Z to A that, so, you know, looking at who's got the best sell-through, Anne McCaffrey up there at 90%, all the way down to Leanne at 70%, then those numbers obviously change. It would have only cost you £114.50 to buy in all the stock that I've had over that period. But your total sales would only have been £409.54. However, you would have only had to process 94 sales. It says 93.25, but you can't process quarter of a sale. You need the whole thing. So 94 sales. So you'd be looking at 15 to 16 hours 
to make that money, which is less than that, but it's a lot less processing time. Um, it's probably proportionate to the number of hours, um, and you can see that because you'd be looking at an hourly rate of around about £27 an hour compared to 28 if you're doing it by the, the score listing. Tw top 20 books, again, it's, it's going to be a different top 20 for these, different top 10 for these, because it's a different order that we're going for. But if we take the top 20 and pop them down here. Well, I've hit the wrong button there, haven't I? Where are we? Copy it from that one. Paste it into that one. You can see that the Liz, Liz, the list is a bit different. However, funnily enough, Lee Child is still sitting up high on that spot. Um, can have a look to see if there's any that have dropped out of there. So, for example, we've got Terry Pratchett in there, and we know he's a good seller. But if you're looking at it just from the the sell through rate, then for some reason Terry has vanished from that list. So that is a bit of an oddity in itself. You would expect him to be up there, but he's just outside. 22 for 13. So although it's good money, everything is just missing out on that side. Um, anyway, let's go back and look at the rest of this one here. So that top 20, you'd have paid £240 in stock. You'd have made £700. It's going to take you 10 hours a month, about 30 hours, and your hourly rate's about £24. Uh, if you're just to look at it, the net sales value, so again, we just change the order so that you know what's been the best in sales value. Uh, the total stock would have cost you £220. You would have made 676 which is quite comparable with if you're doing it by score. Um, the same with the number of items sold slightly fewer in the hours um, which relates to it being a pound an hour more than if you were to do it by the score piece. Net sales, if you're looking at the top 20, you know, you've spent another £150 in stock, you've made a £1,000 instead of £600, uh, it's taking you 36 hours, so you're at 27 87 and then if you were to do that full top 50, obviously it's the same every time for that one because it's essentially the whole list that we've got sitting there. Uh, but it comes down to £22.90, again, the same as in these other metrics. So you can see that if you've got the time, you can take that full list and still make a reasonable hourly income out of it. Uh, if you're much more limited in time, then you can see where you're getting the best value for what you do. But it's not a huge difference. It's an extra pound or two per hour that you can make by focusing just on the top 10. And to be honest, when it comes to the sourcing side of things, you're as quick looking for the top 20 or top 50 as you are the top 10, because you're there anyway. I hope that makes sense. Right, looking at the same thing, but if you were paying 34 pence per unit, or three for a pound is how you would commonly see this going out there. So you can see how it affects how much money you're going to make at the end of it. Now I've got a couple of other examples with other price points, but this really shows you that you're dropping below minimum wage if you're paying much more than three for a pound to get your books. Now, again, qualifiers within that, if you're out picking up lots of books, if you go out and you pick up a hundred books at three for a pound, you're going to pay 33 quid, whatever it is, uh, there will be a few in there that will be bolos that you know you'll maybe find a signed edition or some extra you know a higher proportion of first editions or something that's a wee bit rare that will sell out with this scale and will make you more money but based on just the bread and butter titles that we're talking about if you were to focus just on the top 10 and you were paying three for a pounds you're going to be making about 12 pounds 95 an hour and it's going to take you about 15 hours a month to do that and process it. If you're looking at the top 50 though, 
then you're going to spend about £1,100 in stock. Uh, that number can't be right. I'll need to go and check that number. That's not right. Uh, but your total net... No, it is right. Ignore me. It is right. Yes. Uh, your total net is going to be £1,200, which takes you up to about £14, £15 an hour, picking up all of those bread and butter books. But you can see it's substantially more hours to do that. You know, 85 hours you're looking at to get all of that in and get that processed. So, you know, your 20, 30 hours a month, you could be looking at 10 hours a week doing that, making £14 an hour, so an extra £140, £150 a week across that period. If you were to look at the top 50, and we're talking about, you know, three for a pound. When you look at doing them by the sell-through rate, these numbers drop off. So if you were to take that list and say, right, what are the best? what's the best on that particular sell-through rate, then it's not worth doing unless you're picking up all the books because then you're covering your bases the same as you would regardless of how you're finding them. Net sales, however, if you're paying a bit more for the books, this edges out the others ever so slightly. Um, and how to prioritise what you pick up. You know, looking at the top 10, you'd be making £13.24 instead of £12.95. It's not a massive difference. And probably when you run this through reality, that difference will vanish. Now, it might even flip slightly. So the hours estimates are all approximates. That, you know, an extra hour to do either of these would completely change that number at the end there and possibly flip them around. Um, but looking at net sales or my scoring metrics definitely gives you the best outcome if you're paying three for a pound. If you go up to 50 pence per book, then the, you really need to focus on that top 10. Uh, so whatever the top 10 would be on the whether it's the scoring or the net sales. So net sales becomes the most important aspect when you're paying more per unit. Those top 10 authors will net you about £10.28 an hour, assuming you're spending 45 hours, £405 in stock, uh, and make, you know, it being a total of about 135 sales across 542 items. Now, I'm really hoping that this makes sense. Uh, I know I get my head into these things and I ramble on and it begins to lose the thread slightly. But the qualifier amongst this, as it is with everything else, is if you're out picking up hundreds of books, you will find items in there that are worth more, that you'll make an extra tenner on, an extra fiver on, an extra 20 quid, an extra £250 on. You won't know until you find them. And this is just those bread and butter books. So if you're doing all your bread and butter and every day you have one good sale as well. So, you know, you make an extra £10 from a decent sale every single day, then that hourly rate, you know, assuming you're spending an hour a day on it, it's not going to be £10, it's going to be £20 because you've made that extra sale and that will bump it up. So that's what I'm saying. Although this is about bread and butter and saying, don't worry about the bows, those big buys are still important. You obviously won't ignore them. If you see something that is spectacular, you will pick it up and you will resell it and you will make some good money. But this is the spine of that business. If you just want to have a good, consistent, steady income, this is what it will look like under these different conditions. So at 50 pence per book, two for a pound, then if you focus on that full list of authors that I had there, you'll need to spend £1,600 to make a profit of just over £700 and that's going to take you 85 hours which is going to be about £8 to £9 pounds per hour that you're going to make off of the back of that. So hoping that makes sense. Right, the last one and this is just to show that there is an end point in everything. Let's see if we can just move the screen along slightly. It's not letting me move it along, that's annoying. Anyway, you can just see enough here to understand what I'm talking about. Right, if you're paying a pound per book for these bread and butter paperbacks, top 10, you're going to spend £383. You're going to buy 383 books. 
you're going to make 175 quid over three months but it's going to take you between 40 and 50 hours which means your hourly rate is going to be below four pounds an hour now a 16 year old working in a local shop will make more money than that so if you're having to pay a pound per paperback then bread and butter is not worth doing this that's that's your cut off point uh you do not want to be paying a pound per book well to be honest the cut off point based on all of this would be 50 pence per book to get these bread and butter books sold uh, and that's assuming that you're selling them for around about three pounds each um bundling them up means you're selling them for about two pounds each but that that that'll make sense at some future point i'm quite sure so if you're having to pay a pound per paperback you are looking for bolos and you are not looking for bread and butter books within that you may pay a pound for a generic hardcover book i'm looking to see if i've got any nearby but i can't see anything to show you uh, which could sell for three to four pounds however if it's a first edition it may sell for six to eight pounds so you could go out and still pick up say those top 10 authors but focus on particular editions of those books which will be less common it's not quite your bolos but they will be less common but it could be worthwhile yeah makes sense i'm hoping it does so the whole point of that was to show you that you shouldn't pay a pound per book for bread and butter and ideally you want to be paying 25 pence or less for bread and butter books because that keeps you over the 20 pounds per hour mark no matter what you're doing if you're having to pay you know three for a pound then you want to be hitting as many different authors as you can um, because that gives you the most variety the most opportunity to sell and although it'll take you more time it increases what your kind of hourly rate would be and keeps it above minimum wage about 14 pounds 71 per hour right is that is that all good does that make sense okay we're going to go back to this one so we've looked at this in a few different orders and the key metrics to look at here would be what kind of net sales you get and therefore what the score is so these are the top 10 authors to look for so pause scroll back do whatever you need to make sure that you're recognizing all of these names and you know what it is you want to be buying as you go along and um, i will slowly work my way down this list so that you can get sight of it as best possible but first i'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see who all of these authors are and um, starting with stephen king then all the way down to james herbert on our top 10 ready three two one and i'll move the screen up then from james herbert down to suzanne collins and um, if there's any authors in here that you don't recognize do a quick search to see what kind of books they sell and whether they suit you as they go um liz pishin you won't recognize that because that's spelt wrong it's liz p sean and that's the tom gates books which are very very popular um yep yeah. so there's that bit of list all the way down to suzanne collins who's obviously the hunger games and within this you'll find there's certain editions sell better than others even within all of these and i picked up some suzanne collins books the other day but i can't quite reach them just to show you the ones that are best right and then we go from suzanne collins down to kathy kelly mc beaton that's agatha raisin and hamish Macbeth. for those that don't know nadine doris that's that politician who like writes about her days as a nurse back in 1840 or whenever it was um one of the Katies, we've got Katie Flynn and Katie Ford, who appears at some point. The two Katies, women's fiction, really popular. And then our usual uh, thrillers, so Lisa Joel, Simon Kernick, Gerald Seymour, Ken Foley, who does thrillers and the historical fiction. Beast Quest, so is that Adam Blade, that guy's name? You see them, you'll get them much cheaper than 25 pence per book usually. Pick them up, get them out there. And then from Kathy Kelly, 
we're going to go all the way down to Con Egildon, Rachel Renee Russell, that are th that are B, that B. She writes the Dork Diaries series. J.K. Rowling, obviously Harry Potter, but this includes the Robert Colbraith books as well. So it's a mix of all of the different titles she sells. And J.K. Rowling's one of those authors where if it's a first edition, you can sometimes get a wee bit more depending on the book. Um, well, Staff Pilkey is Captain Underpants and Dogman and various other kiddies books. Barry Loser is not the name of the author. Couldn't remember the name of the author, so I just went with Barry Loser, which is the, the series of books. Again, kids' books again. Uh, Ian Colfer, Artemis Fowl. Everyone knows Tom Clancy. Chris Cowell is the How to Train Your Dragon series. And there's the other Katie, Katie Ford, uh, from The Woman's Fiction. Con Egildon does historical fiction. And Jeff Kenny, Kenny, Kenny is Diary of a Wimpy Kid Man. So the bottom end of that list, taking us all the way to Jojo Moyes. Um, now there's a few in here that I expected to be higher, I'll be perfectly honest. Stephanie Meyer sells occasionally, not often, but every now and again somebody will buy a wee bundle of those, so it's worth having a few of them in stock, just in case somebody wants them. Then we have Geoffrey Archer, who has been really popular. A lot more popular than that 14 sales indicates. So I think with El Jeffrey, I've had quite a few of his books have sold from single listings rather than on the bulk listing. So I had a lot of them listed as singles and they sold and then I created a bulk listing. And since then, 14 of 47 I've added to that have sold. Um, so that's probably quite a short life listing, but I must have sold 30 plus Jeffrey Archer books over the period that we're talking about here. Um, Santa, the same. I thought I'd sold more Santa Montefiore books than nine out of the 30, but that is an accurate number. That's exactly what has happened. Um, but it feels like there's more. So let's say there's ones in here that always surprise me. George Martin, you would expect to perhaps be a bit more popular, but people I don't think I'm selling George Martin books properly because I've just got one listing with all these different titles in all the different editions. And I think if I was to go in and sort through them and take them out and make up sets, they would sell an awful lot better. But at the moment, I've not done that. So we've only got a 20% sell through rate and people will come in and typically buy books two, three and four or four and five. You get the idea. Um, yeah, Jojo Moyes is one who has not sold hardly nothing for ages and then has just picked up and bit in again in the last week or so. So only eight sales there. If we'd gone three months prior to the period we're looking at just now, Jojo would be sitting an awful lot higher, which is why I've allowed this to go down as far as 71, um, because it gives a better picture of all the ones that will do well over a longer period of time. And this, the order I've got them in here is just a bit of an indication on how well they do based on my sales. My sales are influenced by the total number of items I've been able to pick up, how I've priced them, how I've titled them. You know, all of these different things will be different for everybody else. Um, and other exceptions to look at in the opposite direction uh, Ian Colfer so 22 in total and I've sold 11 of them that's only been 2 sales so 2 sales a bundle of 5 and a bundle of 6 went out for Ian Colfer uh, and it's only made me like 7 quid in profit but it was only 2 sales to process but it could be weeks before I get another sale so if we look at this in 3 months time that could be sitting a big fat zero until another couple of sales go out. Similar with Barry Loser, that's been three lots, three different sales to get those. Joe Nesbo, if this had been back last summer, that number would have been up in the 20s. Um, but I've not found as many lately, I've found very few lately to be honest, and obviously not sold as many. So there are lots of different conditions which will impact your ability to do it. But these authors, LG Smith's Vampire Diaries, if you pick them up, 
and stack them up and you've got the space to do it then you will make a steady income not ridiculous amounts of money but if you were to have all of these books 3,290 books from that lot I've got about 7,500 in stock in total so about half of my stock comes from this top 70 list then over three months you would have made about £1,500 I hope that makes sense anyway I'm not going to blather on about this anymore um, you know take a note of those authors if there's some that you're not familiar with keep your eyes open for them when you're outsourcing if you can get them for the right price which is really 50 pence per book maximum um, but if you want to be making any kind of you know a, a reasonable amount of money back on these you're really looking at three for a pound max preferably 25 pence per book or less so find those places that have them for that price and go in with this list and pick them up get them listed in variation listings so you know Stephen King books and the variations are all the different titles with you know so Firestar paperback 1985 you know that becomes your variation title within it get pictures of all of them if they're a wee bit if there's lots of different editions of a book make sure that you're taking a picture of front cover back cover spine and the publication page people want to see that publication page and then they will pay a bit more because they know they are getting a first print or a 20 second print that's that's important for a lot of people in the way we want to be selling um you don't have to do that with every author but with some where there's a lot of different editions stephen king terry pratchett two prime prime examples of that then it's well worth doing that if you pick up any of these authors and they're like first edition hardcovers again that becomes part of your variation title so david williams gangster granny hardcover first edition first print that's the title you put in and instead of it selling for three pounds you will be able to sell it for six seven eight pounds and that will pump up bump up your overall sales value which is why i'm selling a lot of first edition david williams for 54 sold we're at nearly a pound a book coming in so a lot of those will be 50 pence a book paperbacks and a few of them will be a couple of pounds for the hard covers but it's the net profit off the back of them right i'm going to leave it at that uh, and say thank you very much for your patience for watching this however long it has been me talking about you know the in my opinion the best authors to go out and pick up on a regular basis to make an income on eBay. Not going to make you rich, but if you want to get a wee steady side hustle going, these are definitely great authors to go out and pick up if you can get them for the right amount of money. Anyway, this is what I do on a Saturday morning. I don't know about you guys, but I'll get this uploaded so you can see it this afternoon, so it's still relevant. Um, I'll do a wee sales video tomorrow for... Uh, my Friday Saturday sales and then life will return to normal on Monday okay thanks very much for watching oh 970 subscribers so close so if you haven't already and you've made it this far through please subscribe just just hit the wee subscribe button you can hit a like if you want as well but wee subscribe button would be good really just want to get to that thousand mark and then I will never mention subscribers again until we're reaching some other kind of uh, milestone number and I can start blethering on about it as it goes. Anyway, that's all for today. See you later. See you. Love you. Bye.